So the first question is, what are the key symptoms of hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism? So hypothyroidism, the best way to think of it is kind of what you associate with a slow metabolism or fatigue, hair loss, weight gain, cold sensitivity, um, constipation. Those are probably the most common symptoms that we see here in clinic. Um, on the flip end of it, hyperthyroidism, I almost want you to think of it as the opposite of that, which is an overactive metabolism or heat sensitivity, uh, palpitations or heart racing. Um, a lot of people feel nervous and jittery, uh, shaky at times, tremors sometimes can even present. Um, and with either of these things, we can really have hair loss as a side effect. Um, I think hair loss is a side effect in general from just an, a reaction to our body's way of dealing with stress. Question number two was, can I continue to take my thyroid medication when I'm on hormone replacement therapy? The simple answer to that question is absolutely. Um, with any hormone replacement therapy, I always encourage the patient to talk to their provider, whether that provider's managing the thyroid hormone or not, just to make sure that there's nothing that's going to interact. But in general, um, estrogen and progesterone replacement is safe to take with thyroid hormone. Question number three was, how can I tell the difference between a thyroid disease and perimenopause? And honestly, there's no simple answer to that question. I think the best way to deal with this is honestly talking to a healthcare provider that you trust. Um, usually with thyroid disease, you have to do blood work to assess it. Yes, it's really symptom based, but unfortunately with thyroid disease, it overlaps with a lot of the symptoms of perimenopause and menopause. So sometimes it's just hard to tell the difference between the two. Um, but doing a full blood work panel can kind of help differentiate it. And um, again, talking to your provider that you trust. Question number four was, will my hypothyroidism get worse, better, or stay the same with menopause? The simple answer is we don't know. No two people are the same. Um, often people will transition straight into menopause without any symptoms, but God only knows that's probably the minority of us and majority of us will feel some kind of symptoms while we're transitioning, whether it's mood irregularity, the spotting that occurs with our menses, transition with how our hair is, whether it starts to get almost stringier or more coarse. Um, you know, hot flashes can happen for a lot of patients. Thankfully, a uh, majority of patients will see some resolution with that within the first one to two years, but that's not always the case. And again, a lot of these symptoms of perimenopause overlap with thyroid disease, so it's really important to talk to your provider about your symptoms. Question number five. Can hypothyroidism or hyperthyroidism cause night sweats? Typically, night sweats are associated with hyperthyroidism, not hypothyroidism. And just to reiterate kind of what we discussed in question number one, hyperthyroidism's kind of associated with an overactive metabolism or kind of what you associate with that, which is running on the hot end of things, having palpitations, um, getting more anxious or nervous, kind of having tremors, all of those kind of associate with that. So again, night sweats are much more common with hyperthyroidism than hypothyroidism. And most patients that have hypothyroidism tend to lean on the colder side of things. Question number six, can vitamins and supplements help my hypothyroidism? The simple answer is not particularly. However, I do encourage a healthy, well-balanced diet. Eating in a way where you're getting a good dosage of your nutrients through your diet and or supplements can provide you with symptomatic relief. Often things such as vitamin D deficiency or having an iron deficiency due to really heavy menstrual cycles, for example, can cause symptoms related to fatigue, hair loss, which is something that we typically associate with hypothyroidism. Um, there is a supplement called selenium. It has been shown in studies to decrease TPO antibodies. And TPO antibodies are typically what we associate with something called Hashimoto's disease. Hashimoto's disease is the most common cause of hypothyroidism in women. And so, 
We do think that it's a sign of an inflammatory marker and selenium has been suggested to help some patients. So it's worth it to try it and at least discuss it with your doctor to see if that's a good option for you. Um, taking biotin is also a great supplement to help with um, hair and nails being more brittle and coarse. Uh, typically though, with most most thyroid assays, biotin can actually affect how it's bound to it and sometimes the labs can come back abnormal. So it's important to, again, discuss with your doctor if the assay does get affected by biotin. Um, with Paloma Health, we do have a kit that is not affected by biotin. So when we do our blood work, we don't necessarily need to hold it, but often the ones that are done in the lab are. So again, important to talk to your provider about this. Question number seven, how can I lose weight with perimenopause and hypothyroidism? There's no simple answer to this, and honestly, everyone's nutrition recommendations are different, so I do encourage most of my patients to talk to a nutritionist or a dietitian at least once um, with their course of their disease. However, I personally follow along the lines of a macronutrient-based diet. I use an app called My Fitness Pal to log my calories, but more importantly, I'm looking at how my protein carbohydrates and fat break down. Now, the ratios of those things are important and when you alter these, you can alter your body composition just based on that. So I think anyone from teenager to postmenopausal woman can absolutely lose weight. It's just a matter of finding a diet that you can stick to because it's not a diet, it's going to be a lifestyle change and it's gonna be something you wanna impart in the long run. So yes, things like the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet or the Mediterranean diet work for some people, but they certainly don't work for everyone. So again, finding a diet that works for you, something that you can be consistent in. And honestly, I think looking at your macro nutrients is probably your best bait on finding a healthy diet that impacts your metabolism and your body composition in a positive way. Question number eight, can my thyroid problems have an impact on my sex life? The simple answer is absolutely. If you're not feeling well from any of your chronic health issues, this can absolutely affect your sex life just based on desire, on mood, on libido, on dryness. All of these things impact whether or not you wanna have intercourse with your partner. Um, it's definitely, again, something to bring up with your physician that's caring for you. Um, often it ends up being one of those things that a lot of us don't wanna discuss with our doctor, but I do find that it's very important and it is a big piece to our puzzle. Sex life is a huge part of how we feel about ourselves and how we go about our day. So again, really important to talk to your doctor about symptoms that you're having. Question number nine, will I have to take my thyroid medication after menopause? The simple answer to that is yes, you will. Um, unfortunately, at this time, we don't have a cure to hypothyroidism. So chances are you're still going to be on your medication after menopause. Um, it's both of these hormones are regulated by our pituitary gland, but they are separate. And so one doesn't necessarily impact the other. Um, again, symptoms can overlap, but typically hypothyroidism won't resolve with menopause. Question number 10, can I develop hyperthyroidism during perimenopause? Absolutely you can. There's no timeline for hyperthyroidism, so you can get it when you're a teenager up until when you're postmenopausal. Um, it just depends on what's going on physiologically with your thyroid. Now, there's three most common reasons of having hyperthyroidism. One is something called Graves' disease. The second is due to an acute inflammation called thyroiditis. And the last reason is sometimes we can have something that we call a hot nodule or a nodule that's overproducing thyroid hormone. Any of these things can be triggered really at any age and it just depends on your own biological clock. So if you're having any symptoms of hyperthyroidism such as palpitations, heat sensitivity, um, nervousness, jitteriness, diarrhea, 
really acute weight loss, these are definitely something to let your provider know.